let the binary hymns to the Omnisire ring out, and the legions of Scitari march forward in lockstep. Today we're talking Adeptus Mechanicus, and which Forge World to choose in 9th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Now the 9th edition Admech Codex is out, I thought it might be worth revisiting the Forge Worlds, and talking through the various options that you can choose as a new player coming to the faction. In the video, we'll go through each of the major Forge Worlds, their background, fighting style, and their in-game rules, talk a little bit about the relative strength of the different Forge Worlds, and some of their strengths and weaknesses. So prepare your sensors to receive incoming data, I will start out with the Blessed Forge World of Mars itself. As I'm sure most of you will be well aware, the Forge World of Mars is synonymous with the Adeptus Mechanicus as a whole, the birthplace of the Machine Cult and worship of the Omnisire, and since prior to the Horus Heresy, the entire planet has been covered in Forge complexes, and is the very heart of the Imperium's industrial might. It's the seat of the power of the very highest tech priests, and space marine chapters across the galaxy send their tech marines to Mars, to learn the sacred rites of tending to their war machines. It's whispered that below the surface of Mars, within the deepest confines of the Noctis Labyrinth, lies a reason that has spurred humanity onwards towards its technological achievements. A great shard of the Catan Void Dragon itself is said to reside below Mars, and may very well be the dark secret that twisted the minds of the mortals that lived there into rigid and logical machines, thinking only of industry and production. When Mars makes war, it is a spectacular sight, the heart of the Mechanicus is able to field huge numbers of all varieties of their war machines, legions of Scitari, and great numbers of court Mechanicus units, such as the concentration of worship and production. For unique options in-game, they have the only Admech special character within the Codex, Belisarius Core, the 10,000-year-old Archmagos Dominus of the Adeptus Mechanicus, able to hand out some very powerful shooting buffs, such as manipulating the canticles of nearby units, granting full rerolls to a unit, as well as his own very capable melee and defensive profiles. I don't think he's quite as much of an auto-include as he used to be, but he's still one of the reasons that he can play Mars. The forces of Mars get to reroll one hit roll every time they shoot, no bad thing for a powerful ranged faction, but perhaps more importantly get both Canticles of the Omnisire and Doctrina Imperatives on all of their Skitari units. This can lead to some seriously powerful overlapping buffs, potentially having two turns of enormously increased shooting and durability by using Bulwark and Shroud Psalm to get two turns of plus one save, and then the Beneficence of the Omnisire for extra hit rerolls and plus one to hit from a Doctrina. It means the first couple of turns of most Mars lists should be incredibly powerful. Their stratagem is great as well, Wrath of Mars is either one or two command points, two if it's for a really big unit, and for every wound roll of six that you get with it, you get a mortal wound on the target that you're firing at. It can lead to some really efficient trading command points for mortal wounds, and is something that Mars lists will be looking to use most of the time throughout the entire game. Their relic, the Red Axe, isn't too bad either. Plus 2 strength, AP minus 5, and an extra 3 attacks is perhaps one of the best ways that you can get some Tech Priest Dominus into being a really powerful melee character. Finally, their Warlord trait is also helpful. Panagyric Procession means that one Court Mechanicus unit nearby gets to choose its canticle every single turn. That's either permanent cover with Shroud Psalm, or a whole ton of extra rerolls with Beneficence of the Omnisire, perhaps. Generally, I think that Mars is an excellent choice to run with Skitari units. In general, Skitari are just going to be a lot stronger, as they're the ones that get the extra buff. The Cult Mechanicus units don't really gain much, aside from getting that hit reroll. With the Skitari units, you just can't really go wrong. Obviously, Iron Striders, Rangers, and Vanguard are very powerful. Multiple small units to make use of that hit reroll, and potentially a couple of big units as well. Anything with a lot of attacks to max out those wound rolls for Wrath of Mars. Overall, Mars is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, Forge World, and you can't really go too far wrong with it in-game. Moving on, we come to Lucius, an unusual hollow Forge World, powered by an artificial sun for energy consumption, a technological marvel of ages past. Lucius, therefore, has near-unlimited energy supply, and is constantly very hungry for any sort of raw materials, as they'll easily be able to process and transform them into new war machines. Lucius is home of the Astorum Titan Legion, and is also famed for producing the Lucian Alloy, a very sturdy and capable metal that's easily resistant of enemy firepower. In battle, Lucius is well known for its large number of vehicles, with many Iron Striders and Dune Crawlers amongst their ranks, and they'll often use their stored energy reserves to make use of advanced teleport tactics, their Skitari appearing from nowhere to smite the enemy with heavy firepower. In-game, Lucius is again very strong indeed, 
Their alloys give them a plus one save against damage one weapons, which is particularly handy on anything like Skitari, as most of the time that's exactly what the opponent's going to be firing at them. They also get an extra 3 inch range to their guns as well, that's pretty handy on anything that's quite low range, or anything that's rapid fire, as it just means their strike range is quite a bit better for those short ranged units. Their stratagem, Legio Teleportarium for 1 command point, opens up an entire different way of play to the Admech. He can deep strike 2 non vehicle units in game, and is maybe one of the best most reliable ways to get units of rangers and vanguard straight into the frame, and make sure that they get a turn of absolute maximal damage dealing. Their relic, the Solar Flare, can also double down on this. He can teleport the bearer and nearby unit across the board. There's the potential for a first turn teleport alpha strike. And their Warlord trait, Luminescent Blessing, is also pretty good. He will apply it to a nearby core unit in the command phase, and then that unit can't be wounded on anything better than a 4+. plus. can make a big blob of Skitari Rangers or Vanguard really, really hard to remove. Overall, Lucius is just amazing for big units of Skitari, and perhaps might be the best Forge World for these. Rangers and Vanguard absolutely love getting the plus 1 save against damage 1, they like the plus 3 inch range, and they really like being able to teleport into battle to get maximal firepower. Luminescent Blessing is also amazing for them, so if you do really want to go the, down the Admech Horde route, then Lucius might be for you. Overall, I'd also say that with Mars, they're perhaps one of the very strongest Forge Worlds competitively. I've got no doubt that they're going to be cropping up in tournament topping lists in the near future. Moving on, we come to the Forge World of Agrippinar. This world is located relatively near to Cadia, close to the Shattered Eye of Terror, and has been under constant threat of Chaos Incursion for millennia. The Masters of Agrippinar are Fortress and Siege Masters, and often like to crush problems with quantity rather than quality. Their armies of Skitari, Rangers, Vanguard and Servitors have been swollen recently by the massive amount of refugees fleeing from the destroyed remnants of Cadia. In one of the darker parts of 40k fluff, Many Imperial refugee ships were refused access to Agrippinar, unable to land, unless they consented to undergo the horrific augmentation process of becoming a Skitari or a Servitor. They were left with little choice between docking and accepting their gruesome fate, or slowly starving above their ships in orbit. If we brush over the whole war crime thing though, on the tabletop Agrippinar actually seemed to be quite good as an offensive type of army as opposed to a defensive one. Their weapons get better AP by minus one whenever they're within half range, which kind of encourages their units to get up close and personal with the enemy, to better set off that bonus, rather than hanging back and shooting. They can also hold steady or set to defend whenever they're charged, so have some slightly better overwatch when they get it, and provided any admex survive an enemy charge, they'll hit back just that little bit stronger. With their mass servitor creation ways, for 1 command points they can make toughness 6 cataphron breaches or destroyers, maybe could be pretty handy on a big unit of breaches, slogging their way up into the midfield and tanky a bunch of enemy fire. Their relic, the Eye of Xylexum, will allow them to reroll wounds against a vehicle within 18 inches, which I think isn't bad if your opponent does happen to have vehicles, but you might be left disappointed if they don't have anything worthwhile using it on, and you do have to get up kind of close to make use of it. I don't think it's really the strongest, to be honest. Finally, their Warlord trait allows a nearby core unit to either shoot or fight in death when the enemy kills them. Maybe it's not too bad on a unit of rangers or vanguard that have gone up and got into harm's way but maybe not quite as good as just getting extra damage or something up front. With their stratagem, they'll be quite good for using cataphrons with, and I think that they have a particular good niche for autocannon iron striders, where if they can get those autocannons within 24 inch range, AP-2 sounds quite scary indeed. Rangers will work well with them as well, using that stratagem and getting a bunch of strength for AP-2 shots on rapid fire, and also potentially any vehicles with stubbers could make good use of it as well. Scorpius dune riders or archaeopter fuselaves won't be anywhere near as much of an incidental threat if they're getting AP-1 on a bunch of shots. Overall, I'd say that they're kind of moderate in strength, not quite on the same level as Lucius or Mars. The main reason that I'd want to take them is that AP buff. The rest of their choices just don't seem all that much to write home about. Next, we have the very noisy Admech of Metallica, whose forge world is a metallic ball, now scoured of all life through the rigours of repeated industry over millennia. With the shrieking, pounding industry of their factory complexes, rings unchecked and unmuffled across the metallic valleys and plains. Their forces are known for carrying this onslaught of noise with them into battle, favouring shock tactics, deafening the enemy and disrupting them, and are known to be good allies of the nearby House Raven, who have recently been assisting them against the Death Guard, both featured in that Warzone Charadon expansion, The Book of Rust. Due to this, Metallica have perhaps the most extensive options of any of the Admech Forge worlds, with a whole ton of stratagems, relics and traits in their many supplements. 
Their core Forge World dogma means that they don't have any penalty to hit, either from moving and firing heavy weapons with infantry, or advancing and shooting with assault weapons. Both halves are pretty relevant right now, the assault weapons on anything Cognis mounted on vehicles, or their rangers being able to move and fire for full effect. They also grant a small leadership debuff whenever they're within engagement range, the enemy squad always counts as less than half strength, so they'll be failing combat attrition on a 1 or 2. To be honest though, I'm not really sure that's the biggest deal. They don't just have the one stratagem, they have many, and quite a few of them are really quite disruptive to the enemy army. If you shoot, then you can pick one enemy unit within 12 inches to half their move. There's one for auto advancing 6 inches, which could be handy on vanguard. There's a 1 command point 1 to allow you to turn off rerolls on a unit within 6 inches of them. That could really hurt the opponent's damage output on a core unit. And they have one to boost the rad saturation range of Skitari Vanguard for a turn, meaning that you could have your Vanguard or Cerberus Sulfur Hounds, make the enemy minus one toughness, and then unload a whole load of heavy firepower into them to better damage and kill them. For relics, they have plenty of unique weapon options. Maybe the most useful one might be the Metallic and Lung. You have to get really up close to the enemy, but you pick a unit within three inches, and then you get full reroll to wounds against them with any Metallica units. Again, that could be another way to really allow your firepower to get absolutely maximal effect. Finally, for Warlord traits, you can make one unit minus one to hit within 12 inches. You can reduce the toughness of an enemy unit by one within six inches. And you can have one that buffs the Radium weapons of Skitari Vanguard, giving them an extra six inch range and plus one strength. That could make them particularly vicious, particularly if combined with a Tech Priest Manipulus. With their core strategy, they seem absolutely excellent for Rangers and Vanguard, or basically any vehicle that only mounts Cognis weapons. Again, things like Iron Striders, perhaps. All of your units will be moving very quickly around the table. There's loads of synergy with Rad weapons. And I think that Archaeopters might also be worth a shout as well, as they could be a good choice for providing those powerful stratagem debuffs for getting a unit up close. Overall, I'd say that Metallica look like another very strong Forge world. I'd perhaps argue that they're not quite on the same kind of level as Mars and Lucius right now, though I guess it depends on exactly what you're trying to achieve with them. I feel like maybe you have to be a little bit cleverer with positioning with them to really get the most out of their options. Next we come to Gryer, an unusual forge world, where basically their entire population lives in a ringed space station surrounding their home world of Gryer, but it is capable of independent flight and moving from place to place if threatened. The tech priests of Gryer have a reputation for being unusually devout, entirely unshakable, and also quite inflexible, even compared with their kin. The thought of failure and defeat doesn't even cross the mind of the Skitari of Gryer, and their forces will continue fighting to the absolute bitter end, nothing short of utter eradication being enough to stop a Gryer force. In game for their dogma, unfortunately this mainly translates into a leadership buff, which isn't really the most powerful thing in 40k, particularly as Admech as a whole have a stratagem to auto-pass morale within a certain range of an objective. Gryer units will auto-pass combat attrition, which isn't bad, but not as helpful as a direct damage or defence buff, and they also get a 5 plus save against mortal wounds, which is helpful, but a bit on the niche side. Maybe the single best thing about them is that they can very easily turn off psychic powers, one command point to give you a 4 plus chance to auto-deny a psychic power within 18 inches, that could really throw the spanner in the works if your opponent's trying to do something crucial. Their relic allows one unit to heroic intervene within 9 inches, can be handy for taking objectives, and can be good on melee things like Electro Priests or Rust Stalkers. And their Warlord trait will give you a plus 3 inches to command phase abilities and auras, making their Tet Priests a bit easier to use in terms of buffing. They're perhaps going to be best with anything that's susceptible to morale, and their buffing Tet Priests do seem pretty strong. But overall, as a Forge World, I just wouldn't see them seeing any sort of competitive play. Compared with the really strong other options on the table, they just don't really get there in my opinion. Next up we come to the murderous Admech of Riser. Their forge world is particularly high tech, specialises in plasma weapon production, and is renowned for creating the Lehman Ross Executioner and its enormous plasma cannon. Their culture of research and rediscovery certainly bleeds into their fighting forces, Riser tech priests often fielding many artisan or master crafted weapons and show positive delight in vaporising the foe with high-tech exoteric weapons from ages past. Otherwise, the Riser style of war is uncharacteristically bloodthirsty for the Adeptus Mechanicus, who are usually very clear-headed and logical. Every warrior is programmed with a belief that the spilled blood will serve the Omnisire, and their forces are currently based at the forefront of an orc invasion, trans blades spilling the blood of many a greenskin. In game, this murderous close combat proficiency is presented by plus one to charge and plus one to wound when you get there, kind of making them the blood angels of the Admech. If you want to make a melee-focused strategy work with the Adeptus Mechanicus, then Riser really are for you. 
They'll be good with anything melee, some particular stars being Rust Stalkers, Sindonian Dragoons, and their fearsome Forgivide Electro Priests. Their stratagem for two command points is Plasma Specialists. Unfortunately, far toned down from the previous version of the Codex, it just gives you plus one to damage, and it's only really efficient if you apply it to a big unit of Catafron Destroyers. A whole load of Strength 8, Damage 3 attacks will certainly leave their mark though. Their Relic is Weapon 99, a 24 inch Strength 7, AP-2 and Damage 2 Volkite Blaster. Not a bad upgrade on the standard to be honest, that will lead to a fair few more dead enemy models over the course of a game. And their Warlord trait allows you to double down on melee just that bit better, anything core within 6 inches will get extra AP there. Perhaps particularly powerful on anything with slightly low AP to start with, the AP2 units will really love this. Riser's great for anything melee and Admech, plus Plasma Cataphrons, and I'd say that overall they're a medium to strong Forge world, perhaps just because the melee units aren't the stars of the Admech Codex right now, though if they're going to work anywhere, then it will be here. Finally, for the big Forge worlds, we have Stygis 8, perhaps the black sheep of the bunch, a very secretive and mistrusted Forge world, widely rumoured to be studying and utilising Xenos technology, and deemed highly heretical by the Adeptus Mechanicus. In the past, this has even led to open conflicts between the Admech of Stygis and other Imperial forces, though their shadowy masters show no sign of changing course. In battle, Stygis 8 will keep themselves shrouded, and make great use of stealth fields, jammers, and disruption technology to better land the killing blow or slowly bleed the enemy dry. This manifests itself in game by being minus 1 to hit, provided you're a certain amount away from the enemy. Infantry and core vehicles will be minus 1 to hit, provided they're greater than 12 inches away and for non-core vehicles that will go up to 18 inches. If they do happen to charge into melee as well, they'll ignore enemy hold steady or set to defend, which is kind of a bit nothingy really, as that doesn't really tend to come up all that often anyway. The minus one to hit thing is pretty handy though, it's a decent durability boost against shooting, and it maybe means that Stygis 8 synergizes quite well with long-ranged units, perhaps things like Scorpius Disintegrators, Onager Dune Crawlers, Iron Strider Ballastari and Rangers, things that are happy to sit back and shoot at the enemy, and get that nice minus one to hit thrown in. Their stratagem and warlord trait allow them some nice shenanigans as well. One command point for clandestine infiltration allows one core unit to set up in the midfield. You can also use it multiple times. This means that you can take control of the midfield objectives really early, and potentially get some devastating firepower or melee in range right for a first strike. Maybe it could be very nice with rust stalkers or enormous units of electro priests perhaps. Their warlord trait allows for a little bit of movement within their own deployment zone as well. It allows you to redeploy two units after you know who's going first, so it could mean that you could either get in a great alpha strike position or shield your units from the enemy if the opponent's going first. Finally, their relic, the Omnisire's Hand, gives a mortal wound aura nearby to their character. As it's once per game and not really all that strong, I don't think it's really worth it. Overall, I think the Stygis are an interesting pick, maybe not having the raw strength of some of the other options, but being able to take control of the midfield early, redeployment shenanigans and extra durability at range are all very powerful things to add to a force. I'd say they're somewhere in the medium to strong kind of range. Finally, of course, there's many other Forge Worlds out there, and there are rules to represent your own custom ones that don't follow any of the core dogmas. A couple of the more notable ones in the lore are Diamos and Griffin IV. Diamos is known as the Steel Forge, the Moon of Mars that serves as the armory for the Grey Knights of Titan, understandably an absolute clandestine and secretive forge world, and possesses arcane lore far above many of the others. Griffin IV is the Lost Forge, formerly home of the Titan Legion Griffonicus, and now a dead world scoured clean by the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan. It was a real wake-up call to the threat of the Leviathan when the Imperium learned of its loss, an enormous and powerful centre of manufacturing instantly snuffed out. In-game, you can choose your distant Forge Worlds to hail from any one of these four, Rad Saturated, Expansionist, Data Horde, or Reignited. Each of these ones gets a core trait, and then you get to pick one of three different secondary traits. Some of the combos are maybe a touch on the redundant side, but some of them are quite strong indeed for a specific choice. Rad Saturated gives you a shooting debuff, Enemy weapons get minus 1 strength against any core units that are greater than 12 inches away. Not bad for, say, Skatari units defending against bolters, they'll be only strength 3, so not quite as intimidating to be facing off against. This can be backed up by one of two very buffs to Vanguard. Either you can get 3 inch rad saturation, meaning that your Vanguard can just walk up to the enemy unit, make them minus 1 toughness, and make them easier to gun off the board, or it can make their Radiant weapons absolutely monstrous. The Vadian weapons get plus 1 strength and an extra AP minus 1, 
and with three strength four shots with their auto wounds thing, they're just going to be gunning all sorts of things off the table. It's truly ludicrous damage output for an eight point model. If you want to do nothing but spam Vanguard, then Rad Saturated could be quite good. Next we have Expansionists, this makes AP better by minus one on the charge, so a little melee buff there, but not quite on the same level as Riser. Other things that you can choose for that are getting a 3 inch pregame move for Skitari core units, a 6 inch range boost to rifle and carbine range, and being able to move and shoot heavies for no penalty like Metallica. I feel like this one's just a bit mixed really, you're unlikely to make optimal use of both benefits, and maybe isn't quite as strong. Next we come to Data Horde though, which is pretty awesome for vehicle armies. Its core ability is a 6 plus feel no pain type save for vehicle units, that'll just make everything flat tougher. And then you can choose either to have your vehicles degrade slower, counting as having double the wounds for the vehicle damage table, and also regenerate a wound per turn, very nice extra durability. Or perhaps even stronger, getting 4 rerolls to hit with any Cognis weapons within half range. This combo could be great on things like Archaeopter Fusilars, getting those heavy stubbers in range and getting a whole bunch of very accurate strength 4 hits. Or perhaps more terrifyingly, Iron Strider Ballastari. Get those twin Cognis auto cannons and last cannons within range, and you're almost guaranteed to hit every time. I think this could be really strong for an allied detachment where you put all your vehicles in it. Finally, lastly, we have Reignited Forge Worlds. Their weapons get an extra pip of AP by minus one by sixes to wound on core units. A small shooting buff, again, might be useful on anything with slightly lower AP, or Taraxi or Infiltrator Flechettes. Their secondary buffs are a little bit random. Either they can be minus one to hit in melee on the first round of combat, plus three inches to their auras, or get an AP boost against three plus save models when in melee. Again, I don't think the combinations are really quite as strong on this one, and I don't think I'd take it compared with some of the other options. Overall, out of the custom Forge Worlds, I quite like the Rad Saturated one for murderously dangerous Vanguard that are a bit tougher, and the Data Horde one for very tough vehicles that get enormous Cognis firepower when in half range. So that brings us to the end of our tour through the Admech Forge Worlds, so I hope you've enjoyed a bit of discussion as to what they all have to offer. Let me know which Forge World you play, or which one you think is perhaps the strongest, down in the comments below. I certainly look forward to any insights for people who have been playing with the new codex. If you've enjoyed the video and would like to see more like it, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly be keeping the 40k content coming, hopefully with plenty more discussions for the Adeptus Mechanicus. Finally, if you've enjoyed the video and you've got good value out of it, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which is how I can afford to make quite so many big videos like this quite so often. Video production does take an enormous amount of time, so if you are enjoying, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits every month. If any of that sounds good to you, feel free to check it out down in the video description, and a massive thank you to all of my current Patreons for your enormously generous support. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.